Our folks, you know, our battle really with is with the unseen forces of darkness. And the Lord equipped equipped his disciples. If you turn to Matthew 10 chapter and the first verse please and when he had called unto him his twelve disciples he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them up and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. You know, I did not realize that uh, one of our sisters is here, who some years ago came to this retreat, having ha had an appointment to follow this retreat for knee surgery. And of course, she was very dependent on her stick. I wish you would tell that yourselves rather than my narrating it. And the Lord healed her. And she never needed that operation which she had fixed earlier with the NHS I presume. Well, once again, let's remind ourselves it is the Lord. It is the good Lord. Now, what does the Lord Jesus say? do with his disciples to equip them? He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. Now, uh, that people have been practicing these black arts in Britain, in the Stonehenge and other areas, is well known today. In fact, the practitioners of these black arts have even appeared on the BBC saying, I am a witch, as though it is a very legitimate thing to be casting spells upon others and selling yourself for money to do evil. And now, you know, I have to, con I confront many of these people who are black magicians by trade. And some of them say, I received money to kill people, to cast spells. And it is amazing that all kinds of people suffer greatly because of these powers of darkness. One medical student came to me. He said he was a Hindu. I have an awful headache. No doctor is able to heal me. But I know that my uncle, who is jealous of my advance in education, he is responsible. He has had some spell cast upon me. Well, I said, the Lord is able to heal you, young man, and we prayed for him. And he was free. Some of these naughty cases are not at all easy. And sometimes we have to struggle and pray much before these powers of darkness 
or throne. Now, what do you do in a situation like what we have today, when little children are being conditioned for the black arts? What do you do for that? Now, as I was about to take my flight, catch my flight in Bombay, I saw the captain of some other craft with a big book in his hands. What was it? The latest release, Harry Potter. You see, I do not know how some pastors have interpreted it. But one thing the media itself admits that here is a delving into the black arts. Is it ennobling? Does it free people from fear? I can see a nation of psychopaths ahead. Has the government taken the precaution of quadrupling the psychiatrist facilities in the country? Although I know psychiatrists cannot handle this. I know this. That's not their field, that's beyond them. However, I have to deal with many of these things. And what I say, what they did in the Book of Acts, was, if you turn to the 19th chapter of the book of Acts, you will find that in the city of Ephesus, when there was a demonstration of God's power, this is what happened. And this was known, 17th verse, to all the Jews and Greeks, and also dwelling, Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. And many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So when the word of God prevails, you will have some bonfires. You know, there are fellows who come to my meetings, who used to have afflictions of all sorts. One young man said, I used to find my sheets in tatters in the morning. I would rip, rip up the sheets. One uh, man uh, said to me, as I was being driven to a meeting near Chicago. He was a pastor. He said, after my son saw the exorcist, he got bursar. He was beside himself. We couldn't control him. Now, just recently, there was the case of a little child in kindergarten in the United States. 
who would scream, carry on, beat her teacher. And uh, the principal could not handle it, and so called the police. And she was criticized for calling the police. But the poor principal was called in by the teacher, found that she could not control the child. Absolutely out of control. Screaming, harming others. What could they do? Just think of calling the police for a little girl of five or six. Where are we headed? So the psych ward is full. And we have to repeat patients. No room. Nobody qualified to deal with these things. And many pastors say, Oh, I don't know how to deal with these things. You know, they pass the buck. But what did the what does the Bible say? Now let us turn to the tenth chapter of Matthew. So he equipped the Lord Jesus Christ equipped his disciples for handling these situations. He was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Now, I'm sorry, Luke 10, please, and the 17th verse. Luke 10. We've already seen Matthew 10. And the 70 returned again with joy, 17th verse saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. And Jesus said, 18th verse, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing. A woman said to me in Toronto, a very normal person, she said, suddenly I begin to smell so bad. Like something which has decomposed. And all around me, I had that horrible stench. Well, the Lord healed her after a prayer. Now, there are so many manifestations. I don't know some of those manifestations. One young woman met me in Canada at one of my conferences and uh, she said, well, I was with a Shakespearean company of Shakespearean actors. They have a place in Europe, in Ontario, where, you know, Shakespeare is enacted. But many of those people were into drugs of all sorts and a variety of black arts. I had never heard the like. Never seen anything like that. And here was this woman suffering. Young, beautiful girl. So when I prayed for her, there was one thing. 
she was not willing to humble herself. So, to my great sorrow, the demons did not leave. You see? She was all the time saying, Oh, I'm a fine believer. So, there are fine believers with these kinds of evil spirits. My dear friends, Satan appears as an angel of light, says the Bible. So I have no hesitation in saying there are some who use gifts which are not of God. Because you can easily say what spirit it is. The spirit of God puts an end to a lying spirit. Lying lips are an abomination to God, so you will not speak a lie. Two, holiness. Because he is the Holy Spirit. So whatever other gifts you might have or not, you are characterized by living straight lives. Listen, folks, this is missing today in a greater part of the church. What you call the church, I don't call it the church. I call it the synagogue of Satan. Listen. If you can't live straight, don't you talk about the Holy Spirit. As someone said, it's not how high you jump, but how straight you live. Let us pray. Loving Father, when Britain is poised, In the last moments of a deadly leap into the abysm. Why are we living without a trumpet and sounding it? O oh, gracious Father, forgive us. Please, Lord, give us faith. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. Delighted that you could be again with us today. Now, I do trust you are making some progress because it is of paramount importance that you seek with all your heart and then when you are forgiven of all your sins, you will find a tremendous motivation which will make your life a great blessing to those around you. Now, folks, don't forget that no one can bypass one John, that is the first epistle of John, first chapter and the ninth verse. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, you know, we do not see righteousness even at the altar. And I must confess, religion, as I see it today, has become a big commercial thing. 
My dad and I have always stood against it. In fact, dad gave all his property to the Lord and began to serve people and see as he desired very much in his college days to see first century Christianity, meaning that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. So when we confess our sins, you know, if there is something to be returned to the government, of course I don't want to steal something which should have been given to the government. If it is ticketless travel of some sort, it goes back to the transport. It shouldn't stay in my pocket. Well, he that confesseth and forsaketh his sins shall have mercy. That's God's word. Confession and forsaking of sin. Now, my dear friends, to help you in these, there are some of my books. One, you will see my conversion and my story in Get, Set, Go. John Wesley's conversion and ministry brought spiritual revolution to Britain. And this will be this book of mine has been a blessing to many. Sadhu Sundar Singh was a man who walked very like Christ. He crossed the Himalayas barefooted twenty times to take the word of God to Tibet. And then you also have Revival Secrets. Another book of mine, which I believe will be a blessing to you. And Carl Lewis, who won so many gold medals, Run to Win. And there is besides my mother's book, The School of God's Children which will be a great blessing to you. So, you can order them from our bookstall, and they're not too expensive. May the Lord bless you. Get into your bedroom and take hold of the Lord in prayer. The Lord bless you. Storms howl above me, and there's no hiding place. Mid the crash of the thunder, precious Lord, hear my cry, keep me safe till the storm. There's no hope.